when a biologist uses the PCR technique to amplify a sample of DNA for analysis, how does a concentration of DNA change throughout each cycle of PCR? That's what we hope to answer mathematically in this problem, using this excerpt from a journal article on the PCR process. In part A, we just want to understand how this graph that's shown here in the article operates. The question is, what are the roles that linear and logarithmic scales are playing in the creation of this graph? And how can we tell which scale is which? Remember, the difference between a linear and a logarithmic scale is that a linear scale sets up equal differences for equal distances. In other words, equal separations on a linear scale correspond to equal differences in amount, operating on addition and subtraction. Whereas a logarithmic scale does the same thing, but in place of differences, we have ratios. So equal distances on a log scale correspond to equal ratios, multiplication and division, of amounts on a log scale. So which is which in this particular graph? Let's look first at the horizontal axis. What you notice is that the tick marks on the horizontal axis, which are all separated by an equal distance on the line, are also separated by an equal difference of plus 5, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5, and so on. That means that the horizontal axis, which is depicting the cycle number in the PCR reaction here, is measured on a linear scale. Because again, equal distances on that horizontal axis correspond to equal differences in numbers of cycles. In this case, the tick marks are separated by equal differences of plus 5. Meanwhile, on the vertical axis, what's happening? Well, if we connect each of the numbers that we see on the, the vertical axis one to another, the only way to do that and see a consistent change from one of these numbers to the next is to divide. If I take 10 to the minus 9 and 10 to the minus 10, the two numbers that are lowest on this vertical scale, and I divide them one by the other, I get 10 to the power 1. And so there's a multiplication by 10 to the first power that separates that first pair of tick marks from one another. But that same multiplication by 10 also separates the second pair, third pair, and fourth pair of tick marks on this scale. Since equal distances correspond to equal ratios on this vertical scale, that must mean that our vertical scale is logarithmic. So in this graph, the cycle number in PCR is being measured on a linear scale, while the DNA concentration is being measured on a logarithmic scale. And on that log scale, the tick marks on this axis are separated by equal ratios of multiplication by 10. Because this graph has one linear scale and one logarithmic scale on it, scientists will frequently call this a semi-log graph. It has one log scale, in this case on the vertical axis, and one linear axis, which is the horizontal. Now that we understand how the scales on the axes work in this graph, we can actually look at the data that the scientists that wrote this paper collected and figure out what story it's telling us. In this particular diagram, we're seeing how the concentration of DNA in a sample in this PCR reaction is increasing as the number of PCR cycles that it runs increases. And what you notice is that up until a certain point, the increase in that DNA looks like a straight line on this semi-log graph until the concentration of DNA reaches about 10 to the minus 6 moles per liter. In that case, uh, the DNA actually starts to level off in concentration because your solution is getting saturated. So the question is, up until that point, so before that happens, can we estimate the slope of this line and see what that tells us about the PCR reaction kinetics? So it's a two-step process, as I suggest to you in the problem. First is to convert the logarithmic scale on the vertical axis here into a linear scale, because we can't really make sense of a slope best until we have a linear scale on both horizontal and vertical axes. Once we have a linear scale on both axes, then we can estimate the slope using familiar techniques. So let's do that two-step process. The first step is to convert the log scale on the vertical axis, which increases by multiplication by 10. We want to turn it into a linear scale. And by definition, that involves trading out the multiplication that you see for addition instead. And the question is, where on this picture on the vertical axis are we going to find something that looks like addition? And if you look really closely, where we can find it is in the progression of the exponents that we see on top of the tens. The exponents are increasing by an addition of one from one tick mark to the next tick mark consistently. So while the numbers themselves, the powers, are increasing by multiplication by 10, the exponents are increasing by addition of 1. So what does that suggest that we do? We want to get those exponents and pluck them out of 
the powers that you see on the vertical axis. We want to replace those values with their exponents only. To get the bases, the base tens, away, the logarithm of the base of 10 is exactly, by definition, the tool that we can use. So what we're going to do on that vertical axis is just take the base 10 log of each of those original numbers. That's going to cancel out the bases of 10 and leave us with just those exponents. And if it's just the exponents that live on the vertical axis, then we have a linear scale because all of those exponents, which are separated now by equal distances, are separated by equal differences of plus 1 each time. So now, both our horizontal axis and our vertical axis has a linear scale, which means we're ready to estimate a slope that's meaningful. To estimate a slope, all we should do is pick two points. And because all these different lines on here look like they have roughly the same slope, it doesn't matter which line we pick as long as we're consistent. If I estimate the coordinates of this point to be about 10, negative 8, and let's say we estimate the coordinates of that point to be 13, negative 7.1, then those two points can give us a slope in the traditional fashion. Subtracting the y coordinates gives me about 0.9, and subtracting the x components gives me 3. Dividing the former by the latter gives me a number, 0 0.3, which is the slope of the line on this graph. Now that we know that the lines on this graph have a slope of about 0.3, it's time for us to figure out what that actually tells us. What is the slope that we measured? Tell us about how the concentration of DNA changes in the PCR process in the lab. So of course the interesting part about this question is we measured a slope as though both of our scales were linear, when in fact one of our scales really is logarithmic, the scale that's measuring the concentration of DNA. So we have to be careful, because when we measured the slope we were thinking of it as a vertical scale even though it wasn't. So that point 3, which we think of as an addition in the vertical direction, that's not really an addition to the concentration of DNA, it's an addition to the exponent of the concentration of DNA, and that's an important distinction to make. Meanwhile, our horizontal scale is pretty conventional. When we add one in the horizontal direction, we really are adding one to the cycle number, so we're going from one cycle to the next cycle of PCR. Since that's a linear scale, that's going to be pretty straightforward. So when we take apart this slope to see what we have, the horizontal change of plus 1 we can interpret as an increase by 1 in the cycle number. In other words, for every additional cycle of PCR that we run. That's what that denominator of the slope is telling us. But now let's be really careful in how we interpret that numerator. An increase by 1 in the cycle number is then associated with an increase by 0.3 in what? It's not an increase by 0.3 in the concentration of DNA because the concentration of DNA is not going up by plus 0.3, it's going up in a different way. What's going up by plus 0.3 is the exponent of the concentration of DNA. And when we say exponent here, we mean exponent with a base of 10. So if we're really careful, this is what we mean. That for every additional cycle of PCR that we run, the exponent of the DNA concentration with a base of 10 is increasing by 0.3. And that's a completely correct statement, but it doesn't quite get to the heart of what we want, which is we want to describe not how the exponent of the DNA concentration changes, but how the amount of the DNA concentration actually changes. We don't care about changing exponents, we care about changing values. So we have to translate. And here, to translate, we'll just ask the question, what happens when I add 0.3 to the exponent with a base of 10? Is there a different way to see that? as not acting upon exponents, but acting upon the entire power, the entire value. And we can say that adding 0.3 to an exponent, such as 10 to the power x plus 0.3, is by the properties of powers and exponents exactly the same thing as multiplying 10 to the power x by 10 to the power 0.3. In other words, what we mean when we say add 0.3 to the exponent of the DNA concentration is we really mean multiply the DNA concentration by 10 raised to the power 0.3. Pulling out a calculator, you find out that that number is approximately equal to 2. It's actually very close to 2. So now we're ready to rephrase this sentence, which is telling us what the slope means in this PCR problem. Instead of saying that an increase in cycle number is associated with an increase in the exponent of the DNA concentration, we now know how to replace that clause. Instead of increasing the exponent by 
we want to instead multiply the DNA concentration by 10 raised to the 0.3, which is about 2.0. So now reading this from beginning to end, an increase by 1 in the cycle number in every additional cycle of PCR that we run is associated with a multiplication by 2 of the DNA concentration. Or to really put this in a way that the New York Times will understand, every PCR cycle that you do doubles the concentration of DNA in your solution. And there you have it.